Well, joining me now in Manchester is former Dominican friar Mark Dowd. He's now a writer and broadcaster. And in the Isle of Man is Reverend Jules Gomez. He's a self-described rebel priest and a journalist at the Church Militant, a conservative Catholic news site. Gentlemen, good to have you on the program. Mark, let me start with you. Are you surprised that the Vatican has waded into this right now? The the quote that headlines the document is male and female, he created them. And it's, it's a pretty orthodox and conservative document that's been sent out to Catholic educators around the world. Are you surprised? I'm not surprised. In fact, in some respects, I'm rather encouraged because they talk in the document about the need for dialogue. Uh, they raise the issue. They have shown that they want to engage with something which is a relatively modern development of the last 10 or 15 years. Um, I think what is perhaps regrettable is that having talked about the importance of dialogue, uh, there's no evidence in this document that they've listened to anybody who's transgendered, uh, or nor have they actually cited any um, scientific, uh, social, scientific, or theological studies of gender. So mm. if you like, it's rather a, a, a mixed picture. So Jules Gomez, are they right to not be grappling with this and not be using transgender people as sources and rather just saying this is the Catholic belief, and we're clear about it. Uh, well, in one sense, I would agree profoundly with Mark. Uh, there has been no dialogue. But let me say this. Uh, in my opinion, the document does not go far enough in condemning uh, a, a very pernicious gender ideology that is seeking to be almost totalitarian. Uh, you don't dialogue with an ideology that is completely unscientific. In fact, uh, an ideology that has no epistemology, uh, that is anthropologically re reductionist, that is promoting an anti-woman ideology, that is neo-gnostic, mm -hmm. that is uh, using genital mutilation and promoting a flat earth science. But Jules, where's the power here when you think about, for example, a 12-year-old Catholic who loves God and believes, but is struggling with ideas of gender. And the church, who has all the power, is saying, we're not going to listen to you. This is wrong. It's clear what God wants. The power is on the side of the church here. Where's this kind of ideology that's been forced on this religious person? The power is with a very radical, tiny minority of ideologues who are seeking to ram this down our throat. Listen, I come from India, and I have worked with hijras, uh, a community in India who are hermaphrodites. And I have encouraged people to love them. I've spent hours with them. The 12-year-old child needs to be loved and understood, not forced into breast binding or chopping off his genitals. But the existence of the hydra suggests that it's a bit more complicated than just chromosomes and God's word, right? So what do you do with that? Do you just push out a document that says it's one thing or the other? Absolutely, which is why I use the hydra example. Uh, the hydras are not transgender. They are people who have been forcibly castrated and have nowhere else to go. They are also uh, people who, as we know, are constituted this very small minority of what we call intersex. So uh, uh, they are not the same thing. But inasmuch as I would call people to love the hijras in India, and I have worked with them, I've set up churches for them, I've baptized them, in the same way we would call people to love transgender people, uh, people and children, and not to, not to force something down them, particularly something that is okay. going to do them irreversible harm. Mark Dowd? Um, I think it's very important to stress one thing. Um, a recent study in the United States showed of the 7,000 transgendered people they interviewed, 41% of those people at some point in their life had made an attempt on their own life at suicide. Uh, the figure for the general population is just over 1%. We're talking about people here who can be exceptionally distressed and emotionally oppressed by the fact that they are assigned a certain gender biologically at birth but throughout the course of their life, often in their um, uh, infancy uh, in, in their primary years and then in their teenage years, come to realize there's a mismatch between their biology 
and their own sense of gender. Um, I think that's very important to state. The other thing that's very important to state is that the Vatican, unfortunately, in this document, seems to suggest is a threat to the family. Well, one in 30,000 um, men at birth and one in 100,000 women at birth go on to identify as transgender. It's a very small number of people. So this really isn't a great threat to what we understand as the, um, the, the nuclear family as constituted by the church. Jules, is the church exaggerating a non-existent threat? Well, uh, you don't need to bring religious arguments. You do not need to bring the church into what can be discussed purely on the basis of scientific arguments. For example, genetics, endocrinology, uh, neurology, and uh, a philosophical argument. So, so I, I wouldn't even go there. I mean, it's very obvious that uh, the biblical narrative from Genesis chapter 1 talks about God creating human beings in his image and likeness, male and female. And it is only Gnosticism that denies that matter matters. Uh, in the Gospel of John, we have Jesus, the Word, becoming flesh and dwelling amongst, amongst us. And this denial of matter upon which the entire Western Judeo-Christian uh, scientific narrative was based is now under threat. Okay. From the idea okay. of transgender. M marked out, is, is Jules Gomez hiding behind science? I don't think he's hiding behind science, but I think perhaps um, if, if he's supportive of this document and he's supportive of a lot of church utterances, there's, there's one other very mistaken area here, uh, which is the Vatican presents uh, the transgendered individual as somebody who's exercising choice. Um, it gives the impression that somebody going into a supermarket who's perhaps a little undecisive about whether they want chocolate or strawberry ice cream. But this isn't about choice. I'm an openly gay man. I didn't choose to be gay. I realized through a succession of years uh, in my early teens and in my later adult life uh, that I was drawn to people of the same sex and not to the opposite sex. This wasn't a choice. Most people in the 1970s and 80s probably wouldn't have chosen to be gay because of the difficulties. So let, let's get rid of this idea that somehow this is a choice for people. It's something, it's the way that God made them. And one thing that's to be applauded about this document, actually, there is a very lovely section where it says people must be embraced in their difference and particularity, mm -hmm. and we must never, ever condone bullying and oppression of people. And that's to be, uh, that's to be applauded. And yes, and, you know, maybe perhaps that means that this is not going to be a green light to ostracize and maybe even discriminate against. I want to ask about the Pope, Jules. For many people on the outside, particularly non-Catholics, such as myself, maybe, and this could be naive, we would have expected this type of document to come out during the leadership of Pope Benedict. But when it comes out at the time of Pope Francis, it seems to contradict his who am I to judge attitude when it comes to LGBT issues. Am I wrong? The, the Pope, if you read uh, a number of authors who have analyzed him, uh, the, the, the Pope speaks very ambiguously. I mean, Pope Francis. However, having said that, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, the, the, the fact that Pope Francis himself, who is uh, kind of pro-LGBT, uh, or at least pro-gay, who am I to judge, is uh, endorsing a document that so strongly can that to some extent, I wouldn't say so strongly, uh, question and challenges gender ideology. Okay, he didn't write it, Mark, but the fact that obviously this went out, it's signed off by him and it's from his institution. What does that say about Pope Francis? Well, interestingly, he, he didn't uh, write it and, and there's absolutely no evidence of his fingerprints on this because it comes from what's called a Vatican dicastery. This oh, is actually like a... Yeah, it's my ministry. So um, actually, since this document was published only uh, a few days ago, it has been suggested, well, two things have emerged. First of all, the cardinal who signed it has said that they made a mistake in not consulting, not listening, and not uh, engaging in greater dialogue with people who were specifically transgendered. So that's an admission, and that's an opening of a door to perhaps a second document, which uh, has already been mooted, that in other words, this is a sort of halfway house. This is a staging post. This isn't the final decision of the church on the subject. Um, and, you know, good Catholics should always embrace science, social science, 
the work of psychologists and people in their fields. And really, the church still has a lot more work to do in that area before I think it can actually teach with any great conviction. So, Jules, if Cardinal Giuseppe Versaldi comes out and says, I'm going to now do a revision because I want to consult with people who identify as transgender, would you accept that and, uh, and endorse that? Well, as I've said uh, in the beginning, uh, first of all, we don't even need to go, even as Catholics, we don't need to go as far as that. Uh, we are resting on solid science here and social sciences. Uh, interestingly, a, psycho, a Dutch psychoanalyst, uh, Dr. Gerhard van der Aardwerk, has just said that uh, this document, he's actually criticized the document quite severely for uh, resting upon a certain amount of ideology and indeed signaling that there might be a possibility of entering into dialogue. Yes, enter into pastoral care with people who are suffering from gender dysphoria. Do not enter into dialogue with but, but when you say Okay, so Jules, when you say people who are suffering from gender dysphoria, just to break that down into simpler terms, do you believe that young people especially who identify as transgender or are still wrestling with this thing are suffering from some sort of mental illness? Well, there, there are people in the past who thought they were Napoleon. I mean, let me ask Mark. Okay, no, 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 hold on, just, just for clarity. So it's, it's the same as somebody who thinks falsely that he is the reincarnation of Napoleon. To you, is that well, the I, same? I, 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 in India, I've met numerous gurus who claim they are God. Should I take them seriously? Sure. But, but what I'm saying is that that person who claims he or she is God is that exactly the same as somebody who might be grappling with their, with their gender, gender identity? Well, if they are grappling with gender identity, they need to be introduced to, pass, to, to a world of, cla of so, gender clarity. But what sort of pastoral care is it, Jules? Again, what sort of pastoral care is it if you're saying to me, you are exactly like that person who thinks he's Napoleon? You are exactly like that guru I met in India who says he's God. So what you're going through doesn't mean anything to me because you're crazy. But I'm going to listen and be compassionate to you and love you. That doesn't sound very compassionate. Well, well, well then how compassionate is it when I recommend that a girl undergo breast binding? We, we look at, the, at, at China and we today condemn foot binding. A recent study showed that there are 28 major problems uh, that result, including heart attacks, as a result of young girls binding their breasts because they think they are, uh, uh, they are men. I see. I mean, I mean let's, I see. Be, let's okay. be serious. This okay, is, so, okay yeah. so, so you're equating, you know, that sort of listening and accepting them for, for saying what they are to performing or f enforcing some sort of physical changes on them? Because I, I never mentioned that, right? But Mark Dowd, is Jules more in line with traditional Catholic belief here? And is he, you know, in, in many ways, just the person who is the traditional Catholic who's giving us Catholic theology no more, no less, whereas people such as yourself and others are the ones who are trying to bend scripture. Oh, no, I'm, no one's trying to bend scripture. And in fact, if you speak to a lot of theologians about this subject, even that initial Hebrew uh, in the very first pages of the Bible, talking about uh, God making uh, man and woman or male and female, there's a lot of ambiguity and, 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 and fluidity about those terms. They're not the binary terms of masculine and feminine that we, we understand in the 21st century. But what I would say also is this, you, you raised the issue about mental illness. This was constituted only 10 years ago as gender dysphoria as a new term. It's only been around for about six years or so. Previously, it was known as um, gender identity disorder. Uh, and it was uh, considered appropriate after a huge examination and huge consultation and, and exposure to people undergoing this difficulty that it should no longer be constituted a disorder. So that word was taken away. And I think this is an evolving story. This is a bit like reading a book. 
um, we haven't got to the end of the, of the book yet. It's an evolving narrative, and we actually have to be sensitive about it, the language that we use, and we have to listen to people who are reporting difficulties in this area. Jules, to you, it's not evolving uh, because it's clear to you, right? Well, I, I, I should say I'm a Hebrew scholar, and just behind me uh, in the library, I have Hebrew Bibles, lexicons, uh, you know, copies of uh, manuscripts, etc. Uh, the Hebrew Bible is very clear. In fact, the biggest lie uh, that gender ideology tells us is that there are no distinctions, and the Torah makes distinctions at every single stage. And the moment those distinctions are violated between good and evil, between man and woman, between light and day, the moment those distinctions okay, are but, violated, but, chaos but, but Jules, and you said earlier, and certainly, you said earlier, science. This is all about science, and you don't even have to bring religion into it. But right now, you're doubling down and saying. The holy book no, says I'm, I'm, man and woman, no, and that's clear. No, no, I'm responding to Mark's claim about what the Hebrew Bible says. I, I would continue to maintain, if I write as I do as a journalist, mm. I can, I've written numerous articles without even referring to religion because I'm standing on the solid rock of science. Okay. And, and, it, and it shocks me that you know, we are abandoning science in this whole debate, and we are turning to some sort of pseudo-scientific neo-gnosticism. Okay, gentlemen, I've enjoyed speaking to both of you, and I thank you both for joining us here in the Newsmakers, Mark Dowd and Jules Gomez. Thanks again.